Speaking of trailblazers, I don't know how much talking I'm going to do for the next hour or so. <laughs> there was a topic in the middle of the tsunami of Chris Jericho related stories and AEW drama stories. All of a sudden, the news, I thought this was going to be the one to pull you back early. Kevin Dunn out at WWE. I believe Mike Johnson was the first person to report it, that Kevin Dunn had given his notice that his last day was the first or as of the first, I guess the 31st. And then Nick Khan, yesterday as we are recording, put out a statement or sent a missive to everyone on their email chain in the company saying that Kevin had departed. So I'll read you that in a bit, but what were your, uh, I'll sit back, say whatever you, it's Kevin Dunn. This is one of your big ones. Oh, come on. Now, see, now you've built up, you've built up this false fucking expectation that I'm not going to be able to fulfill or to follow through with. And, and here the problem is, is that it wasn't, it wasn't a, a fall from grace. It wasn't a goddamn they didn't find, see, see, that's what everybody was saying. Oh, what's Jim going to say about this? He's going to have a lot of pleasure. No, he's a 70 year old man. That's made tens of millions of dollars from this company through no talent of his own. And now he's going to go off to fucking play polo ponies and watch other people have women sign NDAs. It, 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 he wasn't caught with compromising pictures of him having inappropriate contact with a goat and run out of town on a rail. See, that's the thing. We knew the rumors had been out there for some time that, you know, when Triple H or Stephanie took over, that they'd probably have their own people in. Well, they never really took over. But at the same time, the, the thought was out there that Kevin Dunn would be gone if Vince was ever gone. And Vince wasn't gone long enough before to test that theory. But it makes sense from a, not only from a company standpoint with the new ownership, but also from Kevin Dunn's standpoint. <clears throat> not only was everybody says he didn't want to work for anybody but Vince, that's right, because Vince put up with Kevin Dunn being Kevin Dunn. He's not a popular person. He's not a people person. He's a miserable person. And I mean, look at the physical state of him. He's 70 and he wants to fucking go away with his tens of millions of dollars that he got because he was figured in when Vince took this thing to new heights. If it was Hollywood, there are goddamn people in the television industry in Kevin Dunn's line of work or in movies or whatever that have never made an iota of the percentage of money that Kevin Dunn has, but are infinitely, infinitesimally, exponentially better at their jobs, it's because Kevin's been there for 40 years, and he insinuated himself up under Vince's armpit or outer sphincter ring or whatever he penetrated on Vince, that led to him being there for 40 fucking years in that position. And, and he, you know, uh, profited from the stock deal over 20 years ago and has continued to profit from it. And then now he's profited the most from it with the big sale. He had still a significant portion of stock. So he's made ridiculous amounts of money that I'm not saying that any goddamn Jack off that runs the Ferris wheel at the county fair could do Kevin Dunn's job from a standpoint of dealing with the budgets and hiring the crews and overseeing all the different departments of production and all that boring bullshit. But as far as having not only a vision for wrestling that differed in any way from Vince McMahon's that was never going to happen. As a matter of fact, many of Vince McMahon's worst instincts were either the seed was planted or they were watered by Kevin Dunn. Laughing that anybody would ever present this in a sports-like presentation. And also, you just talk to anybody in television or anybody in filmmaking or anybody in any kind of broadcast and nobody stays in a job like that for 40 years unless they own the fucking thing right and that was brought up when i was working there 20 years ago they like, can't believe he's been there 20 years but nevertheless 
he's leaving on his own terms. He don't have to work for anybody else because Vince made him rich. And now TKO, Endeavor, whoever it is, they not only want a different look probably for the programs, but they want a younger guy in charge because how long seriously is he going to live at this point? I mean, that's not even being cruel. That's just being a statistician working for an insurance company. You keep saying they, 70. Is he that old? Well, I, he's got, he's look at him and look at me. <laughs> he's got to be older than me. Look it up. How old is he? I don't fucking know. I'm looking it up. And goddamn it, you know what? Used to, you could be able to tell what kind of condition he, he was in by just checking his teeth. But then he got those fixed. But nevertheless, he's made a ton of money. They want a new guy. They want a younger guy. Maybe this will mean that there will be a different look to the program, and not in terms of how many cameras they're going to use or the way they're going to light the building, but maybe in terms of presentation. Are the announcers going to be able to interview talent again, or do talent still have a free reign to just walk to the ring with a microphone? Because it's been so long now, that's the way we do it. Or are they going to reevaluate this thing and bring it back to a really high-def, glossy, new presentation of what the it used to look like before all the sports entertainment horseshit took over? The personalities could still get over. It would probably be easier because you could get lost in the presentation better. Does it concern you when people get jobs in wrestling that trained under him that may have his philosophy? Yes. Yes. Because they, you don't, that's the thing. I'm not saying he can't teach anybody anything about producing television. I'm saying it would be the worst thing ever that he ever taught anybody anything about how to think about wrestling. And there was the problem. I wouldn't have had nearly the problem with Kevin Dunn that I did if he was like the head of production at every other wrestling company and just shot the shit. But he had opinions with Vince that Vince would take seriously on the talent, on the angles, on how, oh, don't get too wrestling if you tried to make people believe shit. That was what needed to be snuffed out and unfortunately never was. And that's what we've got a lot of this shit now that we look at as a matter of course that came from that way of looking at wrestling on television. Well, let's talk about his early days. He was a young beaver when Vince McMahon discovered him because they say, I mean, how true is it that Kevin Dunn's father, Dennis Dunn, saved the company? I mean, that's the way it's been presented. It saved the company because he well, rescued the tapes out of a burning car. Yeah, no, the company was never at risk. What happened was... And they were so loyal that they said, we're going to give your son a job forever and make him one of our top executives. Well, hold on, cowboy. What it was, was that I, and I heard that story, which at that time was only not even 15 years old when I got there, but Dennis Dunn, Kevin Dunn's father was a, one of the heads of production back in the days of the WWWF when they taped in Hamburg and Allentown, Pennsylvania. That's outside and, production though. Cause obviously they didn't have their own in-house production team or studio at that point. But Dennis Dunn's one of the people that used to head up the production facility they, where they did post and they did other things down in Washington. Remember, do you remember hearing about that? I believe so, yeah. Yes, and that's where, because Kevin Dunn's from Washington, and that's where uh, Vince Sr.'s original Capital Wrestling, Capital Wrestling, imagine that, was incorporated in Washington, blah, blah, blah. Point is, Stanford didn't come in until later on. So Dennis Dunn was driving the tapes back from Hamburg or Allentown or whatever, and his fucking car caught on fire. And as the story goes, he wrist singed hands and bony fingers to get the TV tapes out of the trunk, or elsewise, they, it would have cost him, back in those days, a pretty penny to shoot a TV and, and pay for everything and pay the boys and then not have anything show for it. But it didn't save the company. But that was the start of loyalty or even more furtherance of loyalty between Vince Sr. and Dennis Dunn and also Vince Jr. because he was at the time, he didn't own the company yet, but he was the TV announcer. He was on the shows, right? He'd have had to do all that shit over again. And then 
probably because Kevin Dunn, who is Dennis Dunn's son, they brought him in in the early 80s to be some type of associate producer. And then he and Vince, for whatever reason, hit it off, probably because of their disdain for anything approaching professional wrestling. And Kevin moved up in the ranks to where you see him 40 years later, a 70-year-old reformed beaver who has just retired with one week's notice. So how old is he? Did you find that? He is 68 years old. Kevin Dunn is 68 okay, years old. Okay, when you get to be 68 fucking years old and somebody calls you 70, you can't get too goddamn insulted. Well, here's a statement that Nick Khan sent to WWE staff and talent. I believe it was put out there by Sean Ross Sapp. After 40-plus years of helping to build WWE and, hands down, the best production and media unit in the entire sports and entertainment business, Kevin Dunn will be leaving our company as of today. <laughs> Before WrestleMania 1. And he seriously, like, this came out like in a week, right? From Not even a week from no, the start of the announcement. Kevin Dunn is retiring to New Year's Day. He's done. Before WrestleMania 1, Kevin joined Vince at WWF. Many of us remember a pre-WrestleMania WWF, a regional wrestling company that looked like a regional wrestling company. Then, we experienced WrestleMania 1, whether live, on closed circuit, or years later elsewhere. It was magic. A regional wrestling company had become a global sports entertainment juggernaut. Vince led the way, side by side with Kevin Dunn. Joined at the hip, like a conjoined twin. When many of us were kids standing in line waiting to play Pac-Man, Kevin was already on the road, breaking his back to help build our company. When you so, that, so that's what happened to him physically. I wondered why he was hunched over like that with that Renfield stature. When you see our product now, there is nothing that comes close to its look or feel. 52 weeks a year three to four times a week. It is singular and truly special. No other company can or will do that. And that is because of Kevin and our media team's hard work, smarts, and determination. We are forever grateful to Kevin. He will always be part of the WWE family. Paul and I will be having an in-person meeting with the media team at Raw in San Diego today at noon and with our superstars at 12.30. We look forward to seeing many of you there, and we look forward to crushing 2024 together with all of you. You know what would have been great? What would have been great if he'd have sent that email out and then had the in-person meeting with the production team where he said, okay, that fucking no-good piece of shit's out of here, that goddamn demanding, commandeering motherfucker. Now we're going to have fun. Just a change in tone. Well, it'll be very interesting. He is right that so much of the look has been, it's Vince, but it's Kevin Dunn. So many of the things that a lot of people like me complain about, the staleness, the sameness, the crappy music, whatever it may be, a lot of that's been Kevin Dunn. This is going to be the first real test. I mean, Vince they're is gone. Obviously, they're going to go after somebody that had experience in live sports one would think because that's the only thing that compares to this from a from a television production standpoint you can have shot goddamn the highest rated sitcom or the highest rated dramatic program or you've produced the walking dead or whatever but the wwe is closer to a live sporting event still than anything else in television or broadcasting and you've got to get somebody with that background they're doing live remotes from from the field or the court or wherever they're not shooting shit on a set say that three times quick and so and kevin dunn had none of that background they started out just his father was the post-production guy right so they're going to go to a i would think a heavily experienced live event live sports director I remember one WrestleMania, Timmy Walbert, the director who later on worked for TNA and, and actually 
came and helped us in Ring of Honor a couple times because he lived in Maryland just as a favor. He did a 22 camera shoot at one WrestleMania, a live shoot with 22 cameras. What the, you know, you need to not only, if, if Kevin Dunn a lot of times gets credited as the director of the program. He's not. The, the actual director is the guy who sits there and says to the technical director, ready three, take three. Kevin Dunn is overseeing everything, but he's more, more of the time than sitting there calling cameras. He's fucking chewing on his goddamn snacks in the announcer's ear going, okay, the package is coming up in 30 seconds. That's a producer, not a director. So where was I going with Well, that? I think they would actually hire in-house because it's such a unique thing. It's hard to go out and get someone just from sports because they have to understand a whole lot more than that to do it. It seems like the kind of job where you almost have to bring someone up who's been there for a while. Well, the 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 thought was it was going to be the Michael Mansuri fellow, and he's already now gone to AEW where he's got nothing to work with. To ruin that show. Yeah, <laughs> he's been doing <laughs> a great job over there. But it, it's, you know, that's the thing is who... Do, who somebody's got to know who all our cameramen are everywhere and who all our vendors are everywhere and who, who to get the lighting in Portland, Oregon and what the fuck, you know, and that is an acquired knowledge over years and years. If Kevin's been the only one doing it and hopefully he shared some of the information with the other people, but I'm, I'm wondering because Endeavor doesn't know any of these people yet. Do they think, okay, we're going to bring in Johnny Hotshot that fucking produced a goddamn Super Bowl a couple of years ago? You never know. And don't forget the influence of Dick Ebersole and the NBC Sports production team. Oh, yeah. On what became the look of WWF, because there's a clear line from what it looked like in 85 as they were trying to expand before NBC and after NBC. That was the thing. And then by 87 post-syndicated shows, or by late 86, they had the big arena look. Shoot big people from below. And, you know, big yeah. arena, <laughs> make everything look bigger than it was. And that was Kevin Dunn. And that was Kevin Dunn, even before he was the top guy in production, he was there for that whole ride. But it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see. But again, if, if you've got a tale of two cities. The AEW VPs are failing for various reasons having to do with not doing their jobs very well. Whereas the only VPs that are leaving the WWE are people who were under Vince and who it may be time for them to, to go. And there's unlimited resources to fill those spots. But the question is, that's what I'm hoping for is maybe somebody's going to come in and say, well, why? In the UFC, the announcers interview the talent. Why do these fucking wrestlers just wander out without a microphone? Why don't we try to make this shit a little bit more plausible and produce it that way? That would be the first UFC show when they got the Fox deal. And I can't even, now it was, God damn it, who tried to kill the guy that molested his kid? Help, Cain Velasquez. Cain Velasquez. He was in he was in the fight against somebody who's I'm escaping me now, but this was back when I was in TNA. So this was 15 years ago. But they had a one hour special on on Fox, and that was the 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 big fight that they were hyping for the title. And it was their network debut. And from the graphics and the way they presented the program and the packages they did to explain to a new audience, to a new network TV audience, the rules of this sport and who the fucking major players were. And the announcers established themselves. And as in color, I think junior dos Santos might've done color because he's the guy that's going to get the winner of tonight's main event match for the world title. And I said, my God, if somebody had taken Bill Watts's vision of professional wrestling and done a network production like this, it could be huge. And then they had the fight, and it reminded me why that wrestling became a work, because the fight lasted 45 fucking seconds. And then they had to fill fucking time. And 
yes, I know those things happen, but the debut on network TV, if Ada had a three round slobber knocker, holy shit. But instead it, and that's why, but that, just reinforced my opinion if somebody could do what they fox network that night did for the ufc to a new broader audience with wrestling instead of this goddamn hokey you know inside the actor studio bullshit that we've got now you could hook people and then you could really play on their emotions and then you could get heat when you were kicking a shit out of that good looking fucking baby face etc just like we did a hundred years ago. They could do it all over again. But instead, we've got, alas, poor Yorick. If Vince tries to ever do anything outside of WWE or, God forbid, makes a run at taking it over again, <laughs> will Kevin Dunn be there by his side? I mean, when you say he's, a, he's 68, he's almost 70, he's leaving, does that mean he won't come back if Vince calls? No, well... <laughs> And by the way, I breaking news, Bruce Pritchard has handcuffed himself to a tree <laughs> in front of the new offices. He said, that's, I'm not going anywhere. It's the Magnolia tree down the street from, from Titan Tower. I remember that one. Um, no, it's a big if. I don't personally believe that there's a chance that Vince McMahon will do ever do anything else in wrestling or the wrestling space, as they say, but the WWE. However, just from the, you know, goddamn things we've seen, I guess you can't rule out the realm of possibility. He might try to take the thing over again because he's still in that mix. If Vince McMahon called Kevin Dunn and said, I've just driven my fucking car into a ravine, come to fucking Bangor, Maine and pull me out with your teeth, he would be there. But I don't think Vince will ever do anything but the WWE. And I think as the clock ticks, the idea that he might try to take the whole thing back over somehow is probably fading. Well, with that, we uh, say goodbye to Kevin Dunn. Does this open but a door? I, I can't Does this open a door enjoy. for you coming back? Oh, God damn it. No. What the fuck? Again. He's older than I am. He said, fuck it. I'm done. Uh, but uh, no, it doesn't open a door for me to go back because I'm still not any younger. It's not a time machine. And I can't take joy in Kevin Dunn leaving when he's been made a multimillionaire by business that he was always pissed off that he was in because he, they always wanted to win Emmys. He wanted to be recognized as a great TV producer, not a great wrestling producer. And... For what they did and the budgets they had to keep and the amount of people they had to hire, I'm sure he was a wonderful television producer, but on the his effect on what you saw and or what you got to see from wrestling was not anything to brag about. So I take no joy in him leaving with his head held high and his bank account full. I wanted the pictures with the goat. Well, there's still time, but Jim, moving on that from... That goat's getting old. You know, the prime the prime breeding time of a goat is short with their adult life. I did you not know, know that. that. I don't know yeah. too much about the breeding styles of goats, no. So we, we ain't got much more time. We're going to get those pictures for that goat's going to be completely worn out and good for nobody. <laughs> 